Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing well. So as some of the eagle-eyed monks you might be able to see, we've got my old background back. I am back with my books! Yeah. So when I'm filming this, this is the last week of July and I'm spending this week working from home but back home in Hersfield with my parents. And I'm so excited to be back with my book children! I've missed them dearly and I thought in order to best celebrate me being back with my library that I would do another bookshelf tour updating you on any changes that I made since this time last year but also taking you between these books in Huddersfield but also my bookshelves or you know the few shelves that I have in Oxford so that you can get a little bit of a scope of my book collection because I do love my books I'm pretty proud of my little collection here so you know just wanna celebrate them. Now this bookshelf tour is going to be a little bit different to the one that I did last July. The one that I did the first time around was quite an intense one where I was taking down every single book, showing them to you and then putting it back, doing the next thing, rinse, repeat. It's a video that I put a lot, a lot of effort into, many, many hours of both filming and editing and I was really, really pleased with how it turned out, especially because it was one of the first videos that I ever put up. But of course, as you might imagine, it is quite time intensive and you know, I'm only here for a limited amount of time. I actually want to like enjoy being with my parents over the next few days. I don't want to spend all of my time filming and editing. Even though I do really love that style of bookshelf tour, I know that they're kind of marmite, some people love them, some people think that they're really really boring. I'm personally a super nosy book person, like if I go to your house I am going straight to your bookshelves and I am like scanning, looking around for every single book that you have. Not in like a judgmental, mm, I wonder what kind of books they have, but just I, I, what kind of books do they have? This is so exciting, I like seeing people's personal libraries. But there isn't really time to do that now. What I'm gonna do for this particular bookshelf tour this time around is that I'm gonna take you, you know, around each of the shelves, have a little bit of a chat about them, give an explanation of like my order of things, and I will probably like pull out a few favourite books, a few recommendations. So anyway, enough rambling, let's talk about these books. So starting off we've got my lovely history bookcase. Obviously as a massive history fan I had to separate these books out and to be honest with you, I don't think my collection of history books is that substantial, it's definitely the one that I want to add the most to. So starting up top we've got my little genie mug and my Pumba toy which I've had since I was a child, as well as my little Oxford History of England set which has 15 books in the series, I've got five, I'm very much wanting to increase my collection. On the first two shelves especially I've really tried to make an effort to have everything in a roughly chronological order, so here you'll see things starting from ancient history all the way through to the early 18th century. If we're talking about favourites from this shelf then of course I had to mention Matilda, Empress Queen Warrior by Catherine Hanley, one of my favourite historical figures. Medieval Bodies by Jack Hartnell which is just an absolutely stunning history of bodies, art, illness in the medieval period. And Young Damned and Fair by Gareth Russell which is a biography of Henry VIII's fifth wife Catherine Howard. The next shelf starts off chronologically from the 18th century through to the present day and then kind of transitions into general history books. Favourites on this shelf include The Beaumont by Hannah Gregg, Romantic Outlaws by Charlotte Gordon, The Day the World Came to Town 9-11 in Gander, Newfoundland by Jim Defeedy, and of course Dead Famous by Greg Jenner. The bottom shelf includes slightly larger history books that don't fit elsewhere, as well as my little Nala and Timon plushies. Once again, I've had these since I was a very very small child, and we keep them out and available so that when my niece comes around she can play with them. The top pick from this shelf has to be Georgiana as well, the illustrated Georgiana Duchess of Devonshire by Amanda Foreman, which is stunning. The first big bookshelf that you can see mainly houses the books that I read when I was a child and teenager, basically everything that I read pre-university, with a few exceptions. The first shelf includes some of my fairy tale collections as well as my collection of Roald Dahl and Jacqueline Wilson books. These were my two favourite authors when I was a child and I rather like to display them nostalgically. <laughs> Decorating this shelf is my little fairy on a toadstool, kind of a nod to the fairy tale collections on the shelf. And then my two favourite Roald Dahls would definitely have been the BFG and Matilda. I've owned many different versions of these two books over the years but these are definitely the most beautiful ones that I own. And if we can just take a moment to appreciate the beauty of these three fairy tale collections. Oh, they're just so pretty. The second shelf is a little bit of a mishmash of children's books and YA that I read. Like I say, some that I read as a child and some that I read as an adult. A little elephant figurine graces this shelf because elephants are my favourite animal. A big nostalgic favourite from this shelf has to be Utterly Me, Clara Bean by Lauren Child. I actually wrote to Lauren Child when I was little and she sent me a postcard back which I have held on to all these years. 
And of course I had to recommend Little Women and Good Wives by Louisa May Alcott, which I read last year for the first time when the film was coming out. And actually I would say that Good Wives is my favourite of the two. The Third Shelf is really my reading obsession as a teenager in a nutshell. It is all of my Meg Cabot and Sophie Kinsella books. I adored these two authors when I was a teenager and just read everything they wrote. Another little animal favourite of mine is an owl and here is one that I got from my sister, of course. Favourites from this shelf would be the final Princess Star book which I probably read about 20 times as a teenager as well as the first book in the Shopholic series which I always turn to when I need a chuckle. The fourth shelf I always think of in contrast to the other three shelves as the moody teenager shelf just because <laughs> the colours of it are so much darker and I think the book themes are a lot darker as well. A lot of dystopians, a lot of darker YA, as well as a few classic series of sci-fi and fantasy. The favourite probably being the first Hunger Games book, sorry to all you Lord of the Rings and His Dark Materials fans. The fifth shelf is a bit of a return to brighter, lighter things with some lighter toned YA as well as some lighter toned chick lit, rom-coms, whatever you like to call them. <laughs> My two favourites probably being The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky as well as Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler, which I just have really good memories of reading. And the final shelf on this case is a mishmash of picture children's books and some folders and magazines. I absolutely adore The Buildings That Made London as well as Homes Through History. The next bookcase is a bit of a miscellaneous one full of different series and themes. Starting up top we've got my Christmas bookshelf. Christmas is my favourite time of the year so I like to collect lots of different books on that topic. Of course you can't talk about Christmas books without mentioning Charles Dickens and A Christmas Carol is not just my favourite Christmas book, it's one of my favourite books of all time. Another recommendation is A Tudor Christmas which is non-fiction history about what people got up to at Christmas in the Tudor period. And then my favourite of Carol Ann Duffy's Christmas poems has to be The Christmas Truce. And then we move down to the only two shelves that are dedicated to a particular series. We've got Harry Potter and A Song of Ice and Fire and all the memorabilia that I have to do with those two series. Next up we've got my poem poetry shelf which is starting to overspill ever so slightly. Favourites on this shelf include Emily Bronte's The Night Is Darkening Round Me as well as Somebody Give This Heart a Pen by Sophia Thakur. I also really love And Still I Rise by Maya Angelou and then purely for the benefit of Kieran from KD Books I've brought out The Lord Byron. We then have my play shelf which is not particularly extensive, I'm not a big plays girl and as we can see things are falling over all over the place here. My play shelf is guarded by my skull called Ophelia and as you can see the play shelf is largely populated by Shakespeare. My favourites being King Lear and Much Ado About Nothing, but I also have to give a bit of a shout out to the Pelican editions, which are just stunning, my favourite versions of Shakespeare. And then this final shelf of this bookcase is a bit of a miscellaneous one, lots of folders, but also some theatre programmes, as well as my copy of Hamilton the Revolution. We then move on to my general fiction, which is organised by hardback and then by paperback, and then yes, in colour order. I do love me some rainbow shelves. And no, that doesn't make it hard for me to find books later on because I know what my books look like, I know what colour they are. <laughs> I just have a very visual memory for colour. Recommendations on this shelf include Stay With Me by Ayobami Adebayo, which should have won the Women's Prize that year, it was robbed. Also, The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel should have won the Booker Prize that year, and it was robbed. <laughs> and then The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadler, to my knowledge, was not up for any book prizes, but I liked it. <laughs> Next shelf, just some more hardback fiction. Not really too much I can say about this, but it's so pretty! Decorating this shelf is my little fake pot plant because I'm incapable of looking after real plants as well as my two work badges that my mum wanted me to keep for some reason. Top books on this shelf include Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell, A Thousand Chips by Natalie Haynes and My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Next up moving right along to the paperback general fiction. Once again in colour order. I just really really like this setup. As I say I don't tend to have an issue with referencing books later on because I just know what my books look like. And also it's just beautiful. I spend so much time, especially now that I'm not in my home anymore, just whenever I'm home I'm just looking at my bookcases, just staring at my shelves and thinking about how pretty they are. Hmm. I should probably get a better hobby. Of course from this shelf I had to recommend The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, When I Hit You by Mina Kandasami which I think is highly underrated, as well as Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, and Mr Loverman by Bernadine Evaristo, such a brilliant book, and Mythos by Stephen Fry. And down again to the next lot of paperback general fiction, starting with pink books, moving on to brown, white, 
grey. It's starting to go down into the black books. Oh, so exciting. If you also organise your books by rainbow order, tell me which colour is most represented on your shelf. Recommendations on the shelf include Booktube's favourite Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel, The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, which was the book that really got me back into reading, Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman, Silver Sparrow by Tiari Jones who wrote An American Marriage which is also a book that I really like, and then of course a Little Life by Hangi Yanagahara. I know this is a bit of a controversial one, I actually really like it. As Grace from GK Reads would say, I am a Hanya Fanagahara. Ha ha ha. And then finally we have all of the black books, all of the ones with black spines, of which I appear to have a lot and there are some absolute bangers of books here. That is not a phrase that I have ever used and I'm not sure it really suits me. But just some very very good books. And there's Shuggy Bane just on its own. <laughs> Once again, for recommendations from these shelves, we've got Circe by Madeline Miller, another Madeline Miller, she just writes some very good books, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, then The Secret History by Donna Tartt, and If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio, both Dark Academia, both absolutely fantastic. And then we have my final shelf, which is a mishmash of classics and non-fiction that isn't history. I really like this bookcase, I think it's a nice little mishmash of things. Starting off with my top shelf, which is classics, and can we just marvel for a second at all the beautiful beautiful editions of classics that there are in the world from like the vintage to the cloth bound classics oh they're just so pretty a couple of knickknacks on this shelf include this card which is a christmas card from my office as well as this picture of me when i was very little i think i was maybe about six or seven and i couldn't talk about classics without talking about les miserables by victor hugo i've got two different editions here i love les mis as you know i did a read along for it with kieran at the beginning of the year and had such a good time doing it. And then my beloved Jane Austen, of course my two favourites are Emma and Pride and Prejudice. And then I'm a West Yorkshire girl so I could not talk about the Brontes, my two favourites being The Tenant of Welfare Hall and Jane Eyre. Next up we've got some more classics including the beautiful beautiful Penguin English Library editions which I love as well as the Penguin Vintage Red, White and Light Blue Spines, which I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not as big a fan of a lot of the modern classics that I've read. And then a few miscellaneous editions of books at the end. Favourites include The Picture of Dorian Gray, which I really need to reread, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, North and South and Wives and Daughters, both by Elizabeth Gaskell, Animal Farm by George Orwell, and The Dumb House by John Burnside, which is just a masterclass in creepy literary storytelling. We've then got one of the first my non-fiction shelves which starts off with a lot of books about books, goes into a bit of an odd bunch of miscellaneous books and then culminates with some memoirs that I really enjoy. Favourites from this shelf include Book Love by Debbie Tung which is just full of gorgeous funny illustrations all about having a love for reading, a love for books. Stop What You're Doing and Read This which is a really underrated essay collection all about why reading is so important. Quiet by Susan Cain which really speaks to the introvert in me. This is Going to Hurt by Adam Kay, which both made me laugh and cry in equal measure. When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi, which made me cry on the London Underground. And Why Be Happy When You Could Be Normal by Jeanette Winterson, which didn't make me cry, but was very emotionally powerful anyway. We then have another nonfiction shelf, which really speaks to 2017 me. Lots of books about productivity and minimalism, and then it goes into books that are more about social activism and feminism. I'm a big fan of Sarah Knight's books, but my favourites from her are her first two, The Life Changing Magic of Not Giving a Fuck and Get Your Shit Together. You can tell that I really like Get Your Shit Together because it has food stains on it because I couldn't put it down while eating. The Curated Closet by Anushka Rees, which I just think is a staple. If you're interested in curating your wardrobe, if you're interested in clothes, fashion, this is one that you definitely should read. And because I'm such a sucker for people's daily routines, morning routines, evening routines, not only do I have both of Mason Curry's books on daily routines of famous people, but I also have my morning routine. I really enjoy Laura Bates's feminist writing, Everyday Sexism and Misogynation, though I've not yet read her latest book. And finally, Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edda Lodge, which is, once again, essential reading. We then have a shelf here that is quite heavily dominated by some of my mum's books, a lot of her Vary McFarlane books, which I do actually want to read, and then some miscellaneous others of mine. Shout out to the book that inspired my BA dissertation, and also these two Penguin Great Ideas books by George 
George Orwell, Why I Write and Books vs Cigarettes. This final shelf is once again a bit of a mishmash but it is mainly classics and mainly these Penguin Black classics. There is mainly a mix of ancient classics here as well as some medieval early modern ones. Decorating this shelf is my little fake Grecian urn and favourites from this shelf include Emily Wilson's translation of The Odyssey, I am eagerly awaiting her version of the Iliad, Ovid's Metamorphoses and the Decameron by Boccaccio which is the original pandemic book. I then wanted to round things off by showing you my shelves back in Oxford. I am trying to make the most of the shelf space that I do have and as you can see because I don't have that many books with me I am largely keeping it in colour coordination regardless of genre, regardless of whether it's in a series, I'm just doing it colour coordinated because I like it. And then the last of my book collection can be found in my little TBR trolley which at this point is kind of overflowing, I really need to get that under control. But yes, those are all of the books that I have around both Huddersfield and Oxford. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, bye! Thank you.